Well, good morning. It's great to have you joining us today from home. Uh, maybe some of you are all dressed up. Maybe some of you are still in your pajamas, whatever the case is. We love to have, we, it's great that you're here. Uh, I should mention this is probably the best thing you're going to see on the internet today. Uh, so it's great to have you join us. I do have a few quick announcements to make, to make before we begin our service. I do want to mention that we have Young Adults Alpha happening tonight at 7 o'clock. Uh, if you're interested in joining us and you're a young adult, uh, I'd encourage you to join, join us. We're going to be talking about the Bible uh, and why it matters, why we should read it. And we're also going to play a game together. That happens tonight at 7. Uh, and if you're interested, just send me an email at ben at arlingtonwoods.ca and I can send you the link and all the information for that. Uh, also, I just want to let you know that youth has begun back again on Fridays, uh, so you're more than welcome if you're a teenager, uh, grades 6 to 12, we would love to have you join us on Zoom. We have a lot of fun, some, some great discussion, we play some games. This past week we had Tim Cantell from Tyndale University who gave out prizes, uh, so um, that was really good. It was really fun. I encourage you teenagers to join us for that. Uh, another quick announcement I want to make is that City on Our Knees is a special prayer event that happening on January 17th to the 23rd. Uh, and specifically, I want to let you know that on, on January 19th, on our Zoom prayer session, we have other churches joining us for that night to pray, specifically for families, uh, families who maybe are stressed out, dealing with a lot through the, through the pandemic. And I would encourage you to join us for that special prayer time. Uh, as I said, there are other churches who are going to be joining us that night on the 19th. I do have a couple other uh, special announcements. One of them is that we have a community winter art exhibition that's coming up, uh, and we're going to be, sh we want to display some of your artwork next Sunday, or this coming Sunday, not today, but the next Sunday that's on the calendar. Uh, and uh, we want to, to, we want to display your winter artwork. If you're from our church or from our community, uh, we would like you to submit that. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in our kids' moment today, so pay attention to that announcement. Uh, and another announcement that I'm going to mention during the kids' moment is that coldest night of the year is is coming up. That is a special walkathon fundraiser uh, to raise money for Capital City Mission in Jericho Road uh, in our city. And uh, I would encourage not just kids and families, uh, but anyone to sign up and walk to raise money for these two great helping organizations. Uh, and again, I'm going to mention a bit more of that in our Kids Moment video. Uh, if you want any more uh, details on what's happening throughout the week, for example, small groups, uh, prayer groups, I would encourage you to check out our online bulletin or you can read our weekly Arlington Woods email that we send out uh, to keep updated on what's going on. Uh, and also, I just want to mention, thank you so much for giving to support our church, to support the things that we do uh, in this community. And I know these are strange times, uh, and I really do appreciate um, all of you who give. Uh, and maybe I'm just going to pray for people who give uh, in a second. I just want to mention that it's really easy. You can go to uh, our website, arlingtonwoods.ca, and click Donate. Uh, and if you do, you can donate safely and securely online uh, to the church. But let me just pray for all of you who give. God, I just thank you so much for all of those who give. Uh, and I thank you that your word says that you love a cheerful giver. You love someone who gives uh, out of worship to you, uh, out of knowing that, that it's going to make a difference. Uh, and I just thank you for every single person who has given to support this church over the last week uh, and even today. And I just pray a special blessing on their life, that you would be their provider, that you would be their help, God, that you would uh, meet their needs uh, today. And I just thank you uh, that we can give to support the work of this church. Uh, what a great opportunity it is. And I pray that you would use those gifts to do great things in the lives of others. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. So glad that you're here. Uh, Stephanie is with me here, and we get to worship together today. I'm so thrilled about that. I don't know about you, but when, when Pastor Ben just said about the announcements, did you hear him say, click donut real quick <laughs> instead of donate? And I thought, best website ever, click, and it's a donut. There we go. So I, I, but I'm pretty sure it was donate, not donut. But anyhow, maybe that's just where my head is at this moment. And speaking of where our head is at this moment and how you wake up, what frame of mind you're in, I came across a quote this week, and I'd like to share it with you. And then let's just take a moment to breathe and to pray for the service and what's coming up so our heads are actually in the right headspace. So here's the quote. There is no once and for all moment when we can say that at last we are whole. The past is buried and over, the hurts forgotten, the wounds healed. Instead, 
we find that it is to be a search that we must expect to continue throughout our lives. Let's take a moment to ask the Holy Spirit to help you, to help me, to help us through grace, what you cannot do through our efforts alone. Let's just take a moment. And as you're at home, would you stand with us as we sing? come to you as people that know we are not whole, that we need you. And this morning, any words that are said, songs that are sung are completely meaningless if we're not open to hearing from your voice. So I pray you would help us to do that. We thank you for what you want to do in this place. We thank you for what you want to do in our hearts and in our families. In the name of Jesus, amen. Uh, this month at KidZone, we're looking at important rules to live by. And our theme is a really cool board game theme. Uh, as I said last week, I love board games. Our family actually got six new board games for Christmas. So yeah, maybe we have a problem, but we also love having fun together. And one type of game uh, we really enjoy are cooperative games. Cooperative is a big word, uh, it comes from the word cooperate, that means that you work together, that you even share things in the game so that you can help each other win. You don't win by yourself, but you win by working together and helping each other. In a cooperative game, you don't try to beat other players, 
but you work together. And I have a few cooperative games that are super fun for kids, and I wanted to show some of them off. And this is not sponsored by any of these companies, okay? Uh, but of course, there are video games like Super Mario Brothers, where players can work together to win. Uh, and we're, But, you know, we're talking about board games this month, so we're going to toss this aside, okay? Uh, I have another game. It's called Forbidden Island, uh, and it's in a tin, so I'm holding it up like this, and all the pieces are just shaking out. Uh, and the, the object of this game is each of the players is an explorer on an island trying to find some treasures. I'm going to show you some of these treasures here. All these kinds of really cool plastic treasures, right? But the island is slowly sinking underwater, uh, and this is bad. You have to work together to try to get all the treasures and then get to the helicopter pad before the island sinks underwater. If one person loses, you all lose. Another great cooperative game uh, is called Just One. Uh, it's a game we've actually played on our stream. Just last week we played it on our stream, where basically you have to help someone guess a word by giving them another word as a clue. For example, if the secret word was pizza, you might give clues like pepperoni, cheese, crust, or pineapple, because we all know that Hawaiian pizza is the best, right? But if people give the same clue word, that word gets totally cancelled and it's harder for the guesser to figure out the secret word. The whole point of the game is that you all work together to win. Uh, the last game I wanted to show you is one that I actually just got for Christmas. I'm pretty excited about it and it's called Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, most of you know that I love Marvel movies and comics. Not as much as Star Wars, of course, but it's pretty fun. Uh, and in this game, one person plays the bad guy, Thanos, okay? And he's trying to collect all the Infinity Stones, okay? And then the other players all play the heroes, like Captain Marvel, or Spider-Man, or Captain America. And they're all working together to try to beat the bad guy. And if you don't work together, you'll never win. And Thanos will snap his fingers. And if you don't know, you do not want him to snap his fingers, okay? Uh, well, in today's kids videos, we're going to look at an amazing story that Jesus told about someone who had an, had an opportunity to share and help others, but didn't. He, he had an opportunity to cooperate, to work together, to help other people, but he chose not to. And you can check that out by watching our videos uh, at arlingtonwoods.ca slash kids, uh, and that'll bring you to the link uh, for YouTube to check those videos out. I'd encourage you to check them out, sing along to the songs, and, and really enjoy the story. Uh, we also have kids' questions available uh, that we send out on the Saturday before each Sunday, and I'd encourage you parents, talk to your kids about some of those questions. I have two quick announcements I want to make that specifically involve kids. Uh, I want to mention that we are doing a special winter art exhibition where next Sunday we want to showcase winter themed artwork on our live stream. Uh, it could be a snowman, it can be a picture, it can be a snow sculpture, and, and we just want to celebrate community creativity. And kids, you have until Thursday to take a picture of your creation and send it in. You could even win a prize. So I would really encourage as many people uh, as they can to be involved. And it's not just for kids, it's for adults too. I want to see your artwork. I want to see your creativity, okay? Finally, coming up in February is our annual Coldest Night of the Year walk to raise money for Capital City Mission and Jericho Road. This is a really cool way for kids to be involved uh, because you can get sponsors and walk to help people. Parents, it would be so cool to see a ton of kids register and be involved this year. And I should mention that last year, my eight-year-old raised more money than anyone else at our church. Am I bragging? Yeah. Am I challenging you to join the walk and raise money to help people? Yeah! So do it, okay? Uh, and with that, I want to say have an awesome day. Check out those kids' videos, and we'll see you next week. Bye now. Good morning. It's my privilege to be able to pray with you all this morning. Psalm 86 says in part, 
With all my heart I will praise you, O Lord my God. I will give glory to your name, for your love for me is very great. Dear Heavenly Father, we do want to praise you this day because we know these words are true. You have blessed us in so many ways, and we want to always remember your goodness to us. Father God, this week our hearts are heavy, and peace in our world seems to be in short supply. This morning we'd lift up our neighbors to the south who have experienced shocking unrest and violence this past week. We pray that your mighty hand might calm those who would insert, incite turbulence and conflict. We pray, Lord, that you would give many in authority the wisdom and courage to be peacemakers and to follow your leading in a manner that reflects the peace that is given through your spirit in Christ our Lord. Our Father, we pray your guidance for our local and provincial politicians who are making decisions concerning our lives and activities during these continuing days of pandemic. We thank you, Lord, for those who are working on the front lines in our community day after day so tirelessly. We know, Lord, that they are not only our politicians, but our healthcare workers, store employees, law enforcement, city staff, and so many others. Give them strength and patience as they continue to work tirelessly day after day. Many folk that we know, Lord, are ill. We think today of Carlene's brother. We pray that you might touch Rob even this very hour, Lord. Bring him healing and restore his strength. Be with the medical personnel who are ministering to him and working with him. Give them wisdom and insight into his treatment and his continued health, Lord. We know, dear Lord, that you are the great physician and you care for all of those who are ill in our midst. Dear Father, many in our congregation are suffering illness, injury, loss, treatment, surgery. Many need your assurance of your love. We think of those who have lost employment, have family and relationship issues, Lord. Even this very day, we pray, our Father, that you would wrap your loving arms around them and ensure, assure them of your love and care for them. Please give them strength day by day that we know can only come from you. We thank you, dear Father, because we have witnessed your faithfulness to us in so many ways. We see your grace, mercy, and compassion all around us. We pray, dear Lord, that each one of us might always strive to show your love and mercy to all those that we come in contact with. Lord, please, please remind us that our lives may be the only glimpse of you that our friends and associates ever see. May we always remember this, and also may we remember that you have granted us eternal life when we love and serve you. We always want to praise your holy name and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's read today's scripture together. This is what the Lord says from Jeremiah 6:16. 6, Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. From Romans 12, verses 1 to 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Would you stand again at home and sing with us?
there that we call out to you today and especially after Linda's prayer for so many things going on all around our world all around our community you are way maker you're encouraging us to return to ancient paths to look to remember to remember where you've been to remember your promises that you're with us on this journey we are not alone and we thank you today that you are the way maker in your name, amen. Good morning, Arlington Woods. It's a funny thing to have almost an empty room and saying good morning to Arlington Woods. Almost empty. Almost empty room. 2021, eh? It was supposed to be awesome. Remember? At the end of 2020, we were, uh, we were um, excited about 2021 because nothing could be worse than what just happened. And we moved into 2021 with a woohoo. And uh, how are those first couple weeks going for us? Not so much a woohoo, is it? 
2021. Well, uh, last week, I think at Arlington Woods, we started very well. I think our pilot missionary friend Tim walked us into a really good checklist that put us in a position to say, okay, what's it look like to take off? Which, as he spoke, made me wonder and think about uh, gauges that I've used for years. Now, if you've heard me teach at a seminar or um, at a conference or, or Wesley Acres even, you might have heard me talk about these gauges. I've used them for years, talking about discipleship and mentoring. And I thought I'd, uh, I'd bring that into our conversation uh, at the beginning of this year. It gives us kind of a baseline. So I'm going to put a picture up here. This, I actually use this in my journal um, every few months. It's a part of conversations that I have with accountability partners. Um, it, is a, it is a way to understand, understand, that's my French coming out there. It's a way of understanding my, uh, uh, well, I'll tell you a little bit about it in a second. Let me put, those pic- let me put that picture up, Abby. The, the uh, three circles. In fact, you can, I think that we were asked if you were looking at the sermon notes, uh, that if you had a piece of paper, I, I'd like you to score yourself right now. I'm going to bring you through an exercise. You can use a piece of paper. I, I was just noticing that I, I have it on sticky notes in my Bible as a reference point. You just date it so that you know uh, what date you did this on. Three circles are these, three gauges. Uh, write those, draw the circles, put empty, full on, 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 on the sides. And then use the arrow. First one is physical. And I'm going to ask you to score yourself there. You, you decide what your scale is. But how, how are you feeling physically? How is your, uh, do you have a cold? Are you feeling a little bit of COVID um, whatever? And the clothes are feeling a little tight? What about, the, what about your diet? What about exercise? Score yourself. And underneath, make a little note of what, uh, what you would score yourself. Actually, that would just be about where I would score myself. Carlene and I went uh, skating and then um, skiing last weekend and uh, this weekend I walk funny so I, and that's a week later so score yourself second one spiritual now for sure these circles overlap for sure they do but a way to to tease it apart and have a conversation to have some language about uh, checking in with one another we can we can tease this uh, this spiritual component out and just say how are you doing in your relationship with Jesus is it dynamic? When you read the Bible, does it make sense to you and does it feed your soul? Does it impact how you interact with the people that you love and the people that you don't love or the people that you don't know? How are you doing with that? And again, score yourself. Not that anybody else will see these circles yet, but score yourself there. And then make a note, just a bullet point underneath why you gave yourself, you know, put the arrow at half tank or a quarter tank or three quarters tank. And the last one is mental health. I've used the word emotion there, but that took a little more explaining than mental health. And I use the acronym RICE. So think about these. Ready? And again, I'm going to ask you to score yourself. The R is relationship. How are you doing in relationships? The Bible actually says that if you know there's something up with someone, it doesn't even qualify what that something up is. It just says you know something up with someone Then you go to that person and make it right. Leave your gift at the altar. You can't even pray until you make things right with. So how are you doing in relationships? Did anyone come to mind in that when I was describing that? Second, uh, the I is intellectual pursuit or intellect. Is your brain being challenged? Do you have a brain sweat going on? Are you reading? Are you learning? Uh, Are you challenging yourself? Are you learning a language? Are you reading a good book? Are you... Because you create it to think. That's, that's true about our faith. The C is creativity. You were created with an imagination. And are you using it? What, what do you do creatively in your life? Now, I got I to gotta give you a, uh, some insight into Cliff. I am not creative. You know, I don't have uh, what these ladies just did. I don't have music. I, don't, I can't even clap and sing at the same time. I don't do art. I don't do dance. I don't, I don't do woodworking. Not that I don't want to. Not that I don't love beautiful. It just, I'm not that way. In fact, uh, right before Christmas, I was with my uncle and my aunt, and I left their house, and I thought, boy, I'd love to spend time with them. And my uncle is an artist, and, and I told Carlene about that. And she arranged for, as a Christmas present, that I would go and 
uh, sit with my uncle, and he, he's an artist, and so sit with him, and he would teach me some things about art. He's about to learn that uh, I don't have that in me at all, but to spend time with him and to try something creative like splashing some colors on a canvas, I, the idea here is what are you doing to try and be creative, or what are you doing creative? And the last one is emotions. How are you feeling? Uh, January, February, Canada, uh, seasonal affective disorder is for real, and it can put us in a mood, right? And uh, quite frankly, this week, um, you know, Carlene and I have been talking, uh, quite frankly, our moods weren't good this week. You know, what went on with our numbers in COVID in, in Ontario, in Ottawa even, and uh, what, certainly what went on in the United States and more. Um, puts you in a place where your emotions can be in a dull or bad place. And so just make a note of that. And that now becomes a baseline. Put a, put a date on that. You can do it with your kids because it gives you some language to use with them. I, I use these and I teach these because it really is participating in that Bible verse that says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Well, God already knows my heart. So that prayer is about God. I know you know me. And I want you to show me the depths of me, my soul. And these are a way to say, okay, well, how am I doing my soul physically and spiritually and mentally? How am I doing? So you're participating in a prayer that you're praying. Secondly, it gives you that baseline. Four months from now or three or four months from now, you take out these arrows and you sit down with a trusted friend and you say, I scored myself at a quarter tank physically. And, uh, and now I'm scoring myself again at a quarter tank physically. Well, that's not right. That's not growing into that verse where my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which includes a physical component. So what do I do about that? Or I scored myself at a three-quarter tank full spiritually. And today I score myself at three-quarter tank again, and that's to celebrate. Or mentally I scored myself at, you know, a half a tank here on this list and on this picture and and so why am I still at a half a tank or less and it gives me a, a baseline a place to say what what's happened here and I and I'll use that I need to have people in my life that that I have that conversation with maybe small group certainly with Carlene we check in with each other that way uh, just something cute and fun to do and sometimes for real um, and then uh, every pastor in the Free Methodist Church has an accountability partner, for instance. And this, for like over 20 years, this has been one of our conversation pieces, my, my accountability partner and I. And if I'm still at a quarter tank physically, because I'm feeling still the clothes are fitting tight, and I haven't done anything with it in four months, then my accountability partner, Carlene, saying, Cliff, stop buying Pringles. For, you know, holy moly, it's enough already. And it, you begin to set goals about moving that arrow into the, into the right way. Now, with these, uh, with these gauges in mind, and Tim's message, very good message from last week about the flight checklist, I, I want to have a conversation about, and, and Ben used the words, and I know it's meant in a different way, but I, I think they interact pretty well. I'm going to talk about a rule of life. And it's an ancient language of the church, about four or five hundred years old. And, um, and it really describes, rule here in this language is, uh, is not regulations or law. It's a little bit like the Methodist language of rules for holy living. And it's not methods or law as much as it is patterns or a rhythm. Build into your life a pattern or a rhythm for holy living or a pattern or a rhythm for uh, a life that would be dynamic in Jesus and abundant living with your family and, and, and the world that you're called into. You already have a rhythm. I would ask you to stop and, and you want to have some fun later on is pretend your life is a rhythm and do it as an EKG. And uh, the, the biblical rhythm, you know, right in the first pages of the Bible is that God, out of his imagination, created, right? We don't believe he random, so he created out of his imagination, and he worked, and did he work or to create? You know, both of those language words are used, so let's hyphenate it and just make it one word, a compound word, work, create. So God, out of his imagination, worked, created, and then he stopped, and he said, it's good. So in order to say it's good, he had to have asked himself, the Trinity asked himself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is this good? 
And so he evaluated it. He used his imagination, we're sure, and then he rested. it. And then he worked to create it. And then he stopped. Is it good? Yeah, it's good. And he, and he imagined and he breathed and he rested and then he worked to create it. And, then, and there's this really healthy rhythm that goes on, described. And then there's this full stop at the end of the week where he, he, you breathe and you, and you think and you evaluate and you recoup and you reset for the next week. And there's this beautiful rhythm. Now, describe your rhythm. Prior to COVID and even now into COVID, your rhythm of exercise, your rhythm of rest, how much you rest, and it's, it's not a healthy EKG at all. And I'm inviting you to think about your EKG, your life rhythm. But to get, to get there, we have to talk about why you would want that. I mean, to give someone rules and tell them to follow it is not the stuff of a dynamic relationship with Jesus. That's the stuff of a form of religion without power. And that has created a whole lot of damage in this world. It's empty. It's been unsatisfying to a lot of people. I go to church and I, and I pray and I try things and I just feel empty. Well, for sure you do. Because there has to be this other... Well, let me, let me approach it this way. Let's try this. Have you ever heard of the imprecatory psalms? You ever heard of the imprecatory psalms? Uh, no, probably weren't taught them in Sunday school class. When you read them in your devotional life, you probably go, that's, that's the Bible. And if you're reading it with your kids, you probably skip the chapter. These are the ones. Right? Let, me, let me read some of the imprecatory psalms. There's about 14 of them, arguably 50. These are the ones that go something like this. And smash the teeth of the wicked and break their jaws. It's the ones that say, declare them guilty. Let their intrigues be their downfall. Banish them. Uh, this one, rise up, O Lord, confront them, bring them down with your sword, pour out your wrath, or this one. And the language isn't quite uh, right in English, uh, but I'm going to read it because you know it or you've heard it. Happy is the one who seizes your infants and dashes them. Can you imagine any of those on the Arlington Woods sign? Can you imagine that? You know, welcome to Arlington Woods. Happy are the ones that seize your infants and dashes them, some, whatever. Uh, children's moment. 10 o'clock. Can you even imagine? Now, it's not that these are a secret and that we only tell members about these passages. The Bible's best-selling book of all time. All these words are in there. And it's not that these are particularly grumpy people that wrote these psalms. That's not true either. These are about passion and heart. If you were to... Um, Say something nasty about my wife. I'm not sure why or what you would say, but let's say you did that. And people were watching that situation happen. So Carlene and I are standing there. Someone says something nasty to Carlene, and you are watching this. What would you expect a healthy response from me would be? Would you expect me to walk away from that and let her go? Would you expect something like defensiveness? Or some sort of reaction? Wouldn't you expect some sort of anger to well up? I'm not an angry person. But I'm passionate about my wife. So wouldn't you expect something? And if there was no or none of that, what would you think about our relationship? I, true story. And no embellishment. Ready? Uh, Carl, Abby was just born. And, um, and she wasn't even walking. She was in her swingy chair that she loved well, we loved mostly for her, but she was in that swingy chair, and um, I came home. It was a really hot day. <laughs> Carlene never wore, band but she had a bandana. I kid you not. She had this bandana around her head. It must have been hot in the house. She had this bandana, and she was walking slowly on the furniture, just like that. And she had in her hand uh, a fly swatter and I think a wooden spoon or something like that, going really slowly. <laughs> I started laughing. I said, what's going on? And apparently we were supposed to whisper. Um, and she sounded just like Rambo. I, I kid you not. She said, mosquito bit my baby. It's going to die. What caused my gentle, kind wife to become Rambo? A little mosquito on her baby. And would you expect otherwise? You know, that she's not an angry person at all. I've known her 30 years. This is, <laughs> she's not angry. But that mosquito was going to die, you know, and anything like it in the house was going to die. And anyone laughing at that was going to get a beating too. I assure you, that's what might have happened. 
out of a passionate heart, out of protectionism, out of, out of love, there was a response. This is the stuff of the imprecatory psalms. The psalmists are not angry people, not necessarily. What was going on is that the people of God and God were, were, were being disrespected, disobeyed, rejected, beat on, uh, oppressed, and welled up in their spirit were these psalms, which were actually uh, spiritual warfare, prayer. They did something with what the feelings were, and so they brought them to the Father, and they said, Father, this isn't right. This can't help. Any, this can't be going on anymore. It was this, it was this anger uh, that God was experiencing too, this hurt that God was experiencing too, this passion that God would have been experiencing too, and they joined him in that because they felt it. They knew him. They love him that way. Read those imprecatory psalms and you'll see the essence of it is, God, you just love and you love and you love and, and, the, and, and these stupid people over here. Can I say stupid? Is that okay? I'm sorry if I just said a bad word. These people over here that are rejecting you and they're, and they're, and they're hurting on God's people and they're, and they're and, you know, good are prospering, or bad are prospering, and the good are getting beaten up, and God, these are all, these are wrong things that are happening. It's got to stop, judge them, beat them, fix them, change them. And then usually in there, there is a line or two that says something like, but you're good, and I trust you. That's the stuff of imprecatory psalm, and it comes out of passion, and it comes out of heart. And, um, and in a moment, actually, I'm going to give you some homework about writing a psalm. Actually, Abby, I think there's a, there's a slide that gives me some help on writing a psalm. There you go. At the top of every psalm, you write a name for God. One of the names for God in the Bible. So uh, do you address him as Almighty God? How are you feeling towards him? So this week, as you gauge your feelings and temperature of the culture, how do you want to approach God? And I, and I think one of the names that would be, I would want to step into here is, is, is Almighty God got to bring things together, you know? What's the issue? What, what's going on here? What, what are the things that are going on? And I look at Canada, and, uh, and remember, imprecatory psalms are not about me being beaten up on. Imprecatory psalms, or this is not about protection, protecting myself or what I'm entitled to. It's about the heart of God. When I think about Canada, for instance, oh God, how is it that people hate on each other the way they hate on each other? And God, we've been called this people of peace, the church. And, and so, Father, how is it that we can bring reconciliation into, you know, indigenous and white and people of color and white and French and English? And, oh, God, it's not right. Well, awaken your church. Or human trafficking. Uh, that should well up a psalm in us in Canada, in Ottawa. Oh, God, smash the teeth of the traffickers. You know, did I just pray that, or incite you to violence? I did not. What I'm saying is, Father, I have to do something with the feelings that I'm experiencing, and I bring it to you in spiritual warfare, and I say, Father, I know this breaks your heart. You hate it. And awaken your church. Father, help us to do something about this disgusting whatever porn is in Canada. Something should be welling up in us as we think through the suicide rate of uh, young indigenous people, one of the highest demographic rates in the world. Oh, God. Or this week, the political nastiness, the polarization, and oh, God, the church contributed to it. Lord, this can't be right, and it can't continue to be true. Hear our cry. So what would your psalm look like? But it has to be about the heart of God. A rule of life without passion is really a form of religion without the power. And so I'm not asking you to write psalms that are about what you think is wrong in the world. I'm asking you to write psalms that have to do with the heart of God and his passion. Now the reason I bring up imprecatory psalms when we're about to talk about rule of life is that this is a gauge, you know? If you say something nasty to my wife and I'm standing there and I do nothing with that, 
That should say something about our relationship that you should be a little concerned about. Or if that mosquito bit Carlene and she laughed about the mosquito, you know, that should say something about Carlene as a mom, you know. And if I look at the world and I'm not feeling the hurt that God feels about the things that are going on, or there's just a lack of passion in my journey with Jesus, then there's a gauge there that you need to stop and breathe and say, Father, I want that. And if you want that, then we can to have the conversation about a rule of life. Let me, uh, let me show you two verses, because I think that gets us there. First one is this. Actually, uh, Abby, uh, I think you have it on the screen. It's the one that said, Jesus loves me. Oh, keep going. Next one. Is there a next one? That's the one. Why don't you read that from home? Um, I'll read it out loud, but read it at home. Jesus loves us. And this is Paul the Apostle writing this. Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God, God's love because of the way that Jesus our master has embraced us. Do you know that love? Do you know the love of God in your life? And does it elicit in you a sense of um, passion, of heart? I want that. And if you want that, then let me read the second verse. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world. Do not conform to the rhythm of this world. That's what the word pattern means there. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that then you'll be able to test and approve God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Then you'll be able to hear God and hear from him. And the starting place is knowing his love, and then deciding that I'm going to be transformed. I'm going to live into that. Uh, I'm going to invite you into a rule of life. Actually, we're going to begin it March 1st. I'm going to do it nationally, I've decided. I started with Arlington Woods, and I thought, well, why wouldn't I invite the other church, part of your brothers and sisters across Canada, into this? And, uh, and it looks like this. Let me show you the, the covenant, Abby. Let's put that up there. The covenant looks like this. So remember, rule of life is an old word for, rule is an old word for pattern. And here's the pattern. For three months, March, April, May, I'm going to invite you to pray three times a day. Now, I know you pray all day long or you're learning that. These are just focused times. So in the morning, at lunch, and in the evening, you're going to stop 5, 10, 15 minutes, and you're going to pray through, um, well, in the morning, I would suggest that we would pray in adoration. Start your day with thanking God and adoration. At lunch, intercession petitionary prayer and we'll teach about that but this is bringing our request to god and in the evening examination was it good is it good god next i'm going to invite you into a daily scripture you know read study meditate memorize and we're going to use the same scripture together and we'll do that all week long i'm going to invite you into a half day fast weekly and you choose what the fast is. There are some reasons you cannot fast with food, and food is not the ultimate fast anyway. You could do it from technology. That may well be the ultimate fast nowadays. But technology, TV, whatever it is that you, for half a day, just take some time, and that would be focused prayer time. And we'd be doing that, imagine that, as a, as a nation of people of God. I'm going to invite you into a triad once every other week. And some of you I just lost all of a sudden, right? No, I'm not doing any triad. I'll do that. Listen, I am an introvert and I'm shy and concerned. I get what you just thought, you know? I'm not getting to know. So let me give you a couple things. One, um, you can enter this with a group of people that you're already comfortable with. So you can find three or four people, which it's no longer a triad, by the way, but you can do it three or four people. And uh, you can enter and send those names and you can do that together as a group. Or... You can trust the process, and we'll just, we'll just uh, link you up with people across Canada, two or three people, and uh, the opportunity for, those half, for that half an hour is just to check in. How's your Bible reading doing? Are you hearing anything from God? Because I'd like to collect anything that God may be speaking into the church. And so your job will be speaking into us and to each other. And then pray. This does not take the place of your small group. It just adds to and then uh, monthly, and this is not part of the covenant, but it's just an opportunity um, 
for, uh, that's not how you spell bishop, but if it comes close, uh, you check in with me and we're just going to have a Sunday evening time, about half an hour, 45 minutes on a Sunday evening, once a month, where I just check in and we pray together and say, God, is this good? That's the covenant I'm inviting. That's the rule of life. And we're going to start in March sometime. And I just thought I'd, I'd uh, prepare you thinking this through and uh, getting ready to, to, to be a part of this. I'd love you to be a part of this. Um, and just so you know, there's, we'll have resources and a resource page to ask good questions of each other and the scriptures that'll be used. Rule of life, though, without a heart that is passionate or desiring a passion with God is the stuff of uh, a form of religion without power. It's not what we're going for here. We're going for a church that is grounding itself in scripture and prayer and fasting and community. Because if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, I'll hear from heaven, I'll respond, and this world, will, this Canada will be healed. And that's on us. Let's pray. So Father, I want to thank you for the songs that we worshipped with this morning. Songs that helped us, move us, moved us into uh, to remembering this past week and that you are in charge. And we declare that together. We acknowledge together. Jesus, we, we know that you're in charge. We know that you are good despite the circumstances that seem to be going on. Father, as we, um, as we move into this week, as we think about imprecatory psalms, as we think about your heart, would you connect with us? Would you help us to meet with you as we meet with you um, with, with thinking about psalm writing and praying? as we think about our gauges, as we have that conversation with each other. And Lord, as we think about not conforming any longer to an EKG that is unhealthy, but we step into yours. Commit ourselves to that end. In the name of Jesus, we all pray. Amen. Amen. God bless.